Okay, students. Okay, that yeah, I know that was exciting. Okay, calm down. Okay, calm down. You got you guys have had you've had that first lesson. Now we're gonna go to the second lesson, then we're gonna take a recess, okay? All right, and remember this is for all of those people on TikTok, so y'all be kind. We're doing it on YouTube, but we're gonna put it on TikTok for those people because you know, for some reason, they're not just getting, they're not getting the information. I'm sorry. Okay. All right, class. All right, calm down. Here we go. All right. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the IRS. IRS. It stands for Internal Retard Society. Okay. Internal Retard Society has a topic that they were talking about because they think all of you are retards. Let's continue. Let's continue with tapping on that little button right there. We're going to the IRS website. Okay? Now, notice what it says. If someone owes you money and you can't collect, you may have a bad debt. Okay, now let me make sure y'all understand. That's intentionally misleading. If somebody owes you money, then that means you didn't give them a gift. No, see... Pay attention because this is very important. If you lend money to a relative or friend with the understanding that the relative or friend may not repay it, you must consider it as a gift. No, it ain't. If you gave it to a relative or friend and they were supposed to pay you back even though you know they shysters and they, you know, they normally don't pay people back, you ain't giving it to them as a gift. The banks do it all the time. Do not the banks. You heard of them predatory lenders giving people money that they knew couldn't pay back. So the banks get to do it. So you get this equal protection of law, ladies and gentlemen. If they can do it, you can do it. That's all you got to remember. If they can do it, I can do it. If they can do it, I can do it. If they can do it, I can do it. So they can kiss my... Okay, just remember that song. No, you can't sing it in class. You can't use that language in class. I didn't use it. I took the word out. That's your dirty minds that did that. So let's get back to the conversation. Okay, now class, pay attention. Somebody owes you money. That means they owe it to you. It's not a gift. You owe me. Then you have a bad debt. What do you do with bad debts? Well, generally, we don't want to talk about no generals in the army. General Lee is dead. To deduct a bad debt, you must have previously included the amount in your income. See, they think y'all retarded. You did include it in your income. It was part of your monies, and you are expecting to get that junk back. That's inclusion. Expectation is inclusion. It makes the heart grow something, some yonder or something like that. All right. Now, if you're a cash method taxpayer, shame on you because you know there ain't no such thing as cash. But if you are a cash method taxpayer, this ain't for you. So stop looking. Stop listening. Well, how do you change from being a cash method taxpayer to a, wait, hold on. Let me show you. See, they don't tell you, but I'm going to tell you. Look. You go IRS3115. That's all you do. IRS3115. Just remember that. IRS application to change accounting. You want to change your accounting method. You file this form to request a change in either the overall method of accounting or the accounting treatment of any item. You want to change the overall accounting. That's right. You want to do your accounting under the accrual method. We're going to have to have that lesson at a different time. That's a much more deeper conversation. It ain't too complicated. Just people just can't comprehend how you do the accrual method. The accrual method is the same way they do your credit card every month. The same way they do the math on your credit card where they already add up everything as if you've already paid it off by the end of the month. You know how you pay off your credit card at the end of the month? You're supposed to. Okay, that's the accrual method. They're just that simple. It's just, just, just say you use the accrual method. And then at the end of the year, you add everything up for every month and that's the accrual method okay now got that out of the way that's how you get there okay now it says if you are a cash method taxpayer the only other method is accrual and that's why most individuals are you see generally you can't take a bad debt deduction i don't want to do a deduction i just want to get the credit now look hold on now do you know that you can write off your salaries do you know you can write off your wages? Do you know you can write off your rents? Do you know that you can write off the fees and interest and dividends and a whole lot of other taxable income? Did you know that you could write off your taxes? Every piece of tax you paid last year, if you operate as a sole proprietor, 
That means just you, you have the right to operate as a sole proprietor. If you operate as a sole proprietor, you get the right that off as a business expense. It has to be incurred as a result of business or trade. How do you know that? Well, let's let the IRS tell you. That's what this is about. There's that general again. Generally, a business, even a sole proprietor, see, sole proprietor, Generally, a business bad debt is a loss from worthless debts that are either created or require, acquired in a trade or business or closely related to your trade or business. What's well, related to my proprietorship? I'm a sole proprietor. Everything is closely related to that when I'm doing business because anytime I'm doing business for myself, that's called sole proprietorship. That's right. So, ladies and gentlemen, the IRS just told y'all. Y'all can take a bad debt deduction or y'all can write that junk off. Now, how do you do that? D did you ask? Well, I'm going to tell you. Watch this. That's IRS tax topic. Now, we're we going to get rid of the IRS tax topic. Oh, by the way, got to tell you something. Hold on now. We ain't forgot about y'all. How to write off stocks is worthless. How to write off uncollectible debts. Let's click on that one. Oh, to show that the debt is worthless, you must establish that you have taken reasonable steps to collect the debt. This is the same IRS tax topic, ladies and gentlemen. They're getting the information from the same spot. What are the rules for bad debt write-off? Rules? There are no rules. Look, per section 31 or 36 one, the Income Tax Act of 1961, only banks and financial institutions are allowed to deduct. The in respects to provisions made for bad or doubtful debts. That is a lie. <laughs> that is a lie let me make sure you understand you see that junk right there only banks and financial institutions well you are a bank or a financial institution <laughs> do you hear that you are you are you are you are but we're not gonna do that one right there no 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 we're gonna get rid of that r because we're not retards and we're gonna go right here oh no we gotta get we gotta keep the r we gotta get rid of the s I, I'm sorry that we're, we're specialists. Okay. Now we're going to do there. It is right. No, that's 168. We need IRC and we need 166. Where are you at? They don't have 166. 166 is the best one. Okay. Oh, I did 1663. I'm sorry. That's a mistake. We need 166. Look, bad debts. That's where IRS tax topic comes from. That's where the whole topic and conversation is coming from. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, to write off a worthless or doubtful debt, this is the section, and you get to write that junk off. Here are the rules. Okay? Now, it's it got to be business bad debt, so you always got to be conducting business, family business, personal business. Oh, no, there's no definition for business. It's trade or business. Okay? And when you give money to a person, you're trading. Okay? That's, I'm sorry. That's just the way they write this book. I mean, this stuff. All right, children? Okay, that's what that's the first thing. Now, in the next video, we have to show you all about the bad debt, that you have the right to write off bad debt. Okay? We got to show that to you. So there you go. Oh, by the way. This is, it's not that long, IRS code. Don't, the U.S. code, I don't normally go by the U.S. code, y'all. I go down here to the statutes at large. And the statute at large for this one is right here. Okay, 1958. You've been able to write off your bad debt for years, but they just started codifying that stuff by just codifying anything. But you get to write off your bad debt, people. Okay, now next video is 1099C, okay? Thank you for listening to lesson number two. Now, you guys, you're going to go to recess, and as soon as that bell rings, you get right back here in these seats, all right? Uh-huh, don't be tardy. No, don't not be tardy. That, now, I'm not speaking Spanish. Just don't be tardy. Get, your, get, get out of here. The bell rang already. See you later.